To most New Zealanders, the word science has seemed to mean Rutherford and not much more. And this, the destroyed city of Hiroshima, to have been the disastrous, if necessary, conclusion to his work. The atomic bomb is in fact a sideline of science, but it is a sideline on which unprecedented research funds have been spent. The job one small atomic bomb did on this former city of a half million people made world military chiefs and statesmen take notice of science as never before. The shell in the background was once Hiroshima Museum, but roundabout life goes on. And throughout the world, science progresses in its many branches, of which atom splitting is merely the most spectacular. Science goes on, and at the Dominion Museum, Wellington, we find members of the New Zealand Institute of Chemistry posing for their annual photograph. Here to take part in the first post-war congress of the Royal Society of New Zealand, they form one of the 11 learned bodies participating in the congress. Within the museum lecture hall, the acting minister for research, the Honourable Mr. Nordmeyer, welcomes 600 participants on behalf of the government. I have no doubt, sir, that as a result of meetings of this kind, that a new stimulus is given to scientists and to scientific work. It is at Victoria University College that some 200 varied scientific papers are to be read in the four days of the Congress. First, we will hear the newly elected president of the New Zealand Royal Society, who is also secretary of the research department and a former co-worker with Rutherford on the structure of matter. Cosmic rays are a recently discovered type of high energy radiation. And they reach the Earth from atomic energy systems in outer space or in stars. The rays are very effective as atomic artillery for the splitting up of the atoms in the atmosphere or at any rate in the higher atmosphere. Sociologists hear about films from GM of the listener. For example, I would think it highly unlikely that 15 years ago, or even 12, a conference of the Royal Society in New Zealand, or perhaps anywhere else, would have deigned to notice the subject to the extent that you are doing. So, th so this very fact that you have invited me to present a paper on the influence of the cinema upon society is, in a sense, the core of the paper which I wish to present to you. Hay fever presents different problems in each different part of the world. The Secretary of the Congress's botany section has been tracing active pollens. The most important causes of hay fever in Wellington are the grasses, coxfoot and ryegrass. Two other plants which also cause hay fever are the native shrubs Taupata and Manica. Pollen forms the basis of a quite different line of research by the Secretary of the Geology section. The identification of fossil pollens from the coal seams of New Zealand provides an interesting key to the forests of the past. The Ojai coal of Southland, for example, which is several million years old, has been formed from cone-bearing trees not unlike the white pine and rimu living in New Zealand at the present time. Geologists on a Congress excursion examine an earthquake fault at Paraparam, recently discovered from air photographs. Someone rescues a cast sheep. The hill contains a quartz formation, which had been thought until now to belong only to the South Island, and they all go to the top to look for seashells, fossil seashells that is. Here too, 400 feet above sea level, they find fossil ripple marks of the waves of the sea. They visit sea level too. And meanwhile, back at Victoria College, problems of the Pacific and problems of Polynesia are not forgotten. Here is the Dean of the Otago School of Medicine. Great opportunities and responsibilities confront New Zealand science and particularly medical and agricultural science in New Zealand's ocean dependencies of the South Pacific. 
higher education for New Zealand-specific people is, of course, a vital necessity. This education can be best provided, I think, by establishing a central college of the Pacific which will give to selected Pacific Islanders the sort of education in the arts and sciences as will better fit them to fill key administrative positions when they return to their own island groups. The Maori of today has a heritage of which he could be justly proud. But it is a heritage which belongs not only to the Maori. It belongs also to the people of New Zealand, Maori and Pākehā alike. If there is virtue in the teaching of a second language in our schools, what has better claims to recognition than Maori? Another excursion. Physicists go into the Dominion Physical Laboratory at Gracefield to see what is being done there in the fields of electronics, instrument making, physical testing, optics, radar and so on. These excursions are an important part of the Science Congress program giving visiting research workers and those of the general public who cared to go with them a chance to widen their practical knowledge. Soil scientists are taken to convenient cuttings to see the soils and subsoils of Wellington. To their practiced eyes and fingers, one lump of soil is very different from another, and different subsoils form the foundation for different types of farming. The Congress reveals many more unsuspected aspects of daily life. It is a very real problem in a sparsely populated country like New Zealand to find people in suitable locations who are willing and able to make weather reports during the night or early morning punctually on 365 days a year. The community should be very grateful to all those lighthouse keepers, post and telegraph employees, radio operators and aerodrome caretakers who so conscientiously provide the basic information used in the preparation of forecasts. That seems to be the position with regard to New Zealand water supply. They all appear to have too little fluoride. This suggests the possibility that lack of fluoride may be a factor in the high incidence of dental decay in New Zealand. There are a number of parents who are giving their children an approved daily dose of fluorine, and we hope that within a dozen years to know whether it is effective or not. The public does not know enough about all these research activities, say two Wellington editors in a joint paper at the museum. The demand for scientific books is about 10% of that for all non-fiction, a figure approximately 12 times that of proportion of scientific news in the daily press. These figures indicate that the demand for scientific information is much greater than the present supply. This Congress has shown the vast range and scope of scientific work in the Dominion and it is most unfortunate that the community as a whole should be kept so much in the dark about scientific developments and trends. It is with new questions in their minds about the public relations of a science which works for peace as well as with new facts and friendships that scientists conclude the stimulating four days Congress of the Royal Society of New Zealand.